Good morning, my friends, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to refer to this as a wake-up call. My name is Eddie Marcus, spokesman and advocate of basic human rights for all people. You know, from the time we come upon this earth and can recognize it, or even before then, we are told how wonderful we are. We are told how proud and happy people are to have us. They begin to take care of us here and so on and so forth. And as we grow, we hear about the ambitions that others have for, you're gonna be this, you're gonna be that. And we believe sometimes that we'll even be princes. You know how they dress us up and use our imagination. This, we're indoctrinated at an early age with this. <clears throat> so this kind of shapes our ambition and guides how we strive for this or that. And here we are, find ourselves at one point in time when these things don't necessarily happen like that, that there is something else that is actually involved. And we find that our world is not exactly like we thought it would be that there are these are major challenges. And so ladies and gentlemen, this is the kind of things that we find ourselves in as American citizens, as people of the world, every one of us. We come up with an idea about what life is and then we wake up to what life really is. And the question should be whatever happens to make life change from something that we were all embracing to, and so dramatically change it brings so much, well, goodness for some and so much pain and suffering for others. That question should always be asked. I'm sure it does. And ladies and gentlemen, because of that, I stand before you to serve as a wake-up call. Let me give you an example of this life in a word. When we believe that stuff and then we can attain that we always feel embarrassed. When we go places, we try to pretend like everything is all right. We don't want everybody to know our suffering. This is how the system, how we help the system hide it. We don't want everybody to know it. We don't want everybody to know that we couldn't pay that bill. We don't want everybody to know that we couldn't get that car fixed. So we'll go out in public with however we can get there and we put on that face like, like don't want you to panic, as the president would say. Put on that fake face like yeah, everything is all right and things are going to hell in a hot bed. Well, me and myself, ladies and gentlemen, I was pushed out into a position where I have to face things. I'm just like everybody else. I came into the world thinking that we were going to be fantastic, that this was going to be like heaven. I really came like that thinking that. I saw it wasn't. But I didn't change my mind. I said it's going to be like that. I had found out a lot of things, ladies and gentlemen, that people who got stuff don't usually care about folks. I'm serious. They care a little bit, but really care? No way. Because they blame you. They think you're stupid. They don't understand why you don't have anything. And so they just pick up the thing to make them feel better about themselves. You must be fucked up. And they must be all right. So, <clears throat> I chose to not have anything. My ambition is being to be on the low life. Be down there so you can feel their pain. And so when you, and, and I do that not just to feel their pain. I've always believed that I had a mouth. I always believed that I'd say what was on my mind. I always believed I'd stand up to the devil. And so me feeling these pains of people who are suffering gives me, I'm gonna stand up. I don't care if they don't stand up. I'm standing up. I'm speaking truth to power. Now, I know they know that everybody that stands up like this really is doomed. But I don't have to worry about that. You see, the truth says it's all free. <clears throat> when I come out here, I come out here to say this. When I, my daughter, my oldest child, came into the world, I didn't buy a diaper. I didn't buy one can of milk. 
I didn't hold her in my arms and embrace her and tell her how beautiful she was or how much I loved her. In fact, I got as far from her as I possibly could. And it was only maybe, hmm, 40, 45 years later when our paths crossed again. And I really found out what a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful young lady she is, was. And now, here we are today. She is at stage four cancer. And she's living in a different state. And I have to go and see her. How do you think I feel? That she, the day that I probably might be the last time I get a chance to see her alive. That I cannot offer her one thing, one materialistic thing anymore than I did in the beginning. Now, isn't that sad? Isn't it sad? I know you all look at me and say, why can't you do it? Let me tell you why. I'm not ashamed to tell you the truth. You can bet your life for the past 40 years I've been doing everything I possibly can to make sure that nobody suffers from anything. No one, that includes me, that includes you, that includes all of you, those of you who go out there with those folk, fake faces. Let me tell you, the only reason I've been existing, I guess, or should I say I'm not, at this present time, the justification for my being around today as far as living is due to one woman. One woman who made sure that if she had something to eat, I had something to eat. Who made sure if she had a place to stay, I had a place to stay. Made sure if she had transportation, I had transportation. Made sure that if she took a vacation, I could take a vacation. And the only thing, ladies and gentlemen, that I have done is hit these streets, beat videotapes, preaching corners, uh, YouTube, Facebook, trying to tell you that there is no reason for the stuff except we've been deceived. We don't know the truth. The truth, ladies and gentlemen, is that there is a God. And it is not your government. It is not your race. It is not your gender. It is not what you got or what you don't got. There is a, a literal God. You just can't see it. It's invisible. Spirit. Invisible spirit. And it is available. It's the evidence of that. It's available to every last one of us. And we, knowing our relationship with it, there's none above us but God that feeds us, each of us, into doing what is needed to be done to satisfy whatever our cravings might be. And each of us plan a role that has been designated from the beginning of time. And what comes back is heavenliness and is divine and it is an abundance necessary or required to meet the needs of everyone, to meet the wants of everyone, to meet the desires of everyone. Why? Because it's God. Somebody told me, well, we got to conserve. Conserve what? God doesn't have to conserve. God creates. So be liberal as God is liberal. You can bet your last money. If we run out on one thing, it's time for that thing to end and time for us to progress beyond that. So what I'm saying to you, ladies and gentlemen, wake up. You said to me, listen to these lies of Donald Trump. He cares nothing about you. And it's not just Donald Trump. Donald Trump is a part of what they call a deep, deep state on the conservative side. You didn't know that. You know he wasn't going to tell you that. He would tell you that about Democrats, keep you focusing on him. But what has it done for you? Is poverty still existing? I'm sure some of you got a, maybe you got a benefit. But I ask you, is poverty still out there? Is crime and violence still out there? Health care still out of, out of whack? And if the answer to these things is, what are you bragging about? You caught up in the devil's trap. That's the message. You caught up in the devil's trap and you're riding along with it, thinking that it's okay, that there's you got somebody lying to you about God. 
that just hang on in there and it's going to be all right. You'll get to the pearly gates. Ladies and gentlemen, that's a lie. I'm going to tell you, that's a lie. You wouldn't allow yourself to go to heaven the way you are because you know you won't be able to stay there. You know the requirements are too deep. And if they're not too deep, prove it here while you're standing here on this earth where we can benefit from it. So all of us, yeah, I stand and tell you I'm living in poverty. I'm hate hurting in pain. I'm hurting in the same thing that everybody is hurting. But I'm not ashamed to tell you that it is because of you. I've been out there. God, and I say this, God sent me amongst you to tell you that you're on the path to hell. To challenge you to do the things that will wipe out poverty, to do the things that will wipe out injustice, to do it. It's no, you don't, have to, it's no, don't worry about breaking no law. When you're standing there for what's right, you're doing love. And you expose the deception. And you can see the tide of riding the highway of life. Well, this is what I'm trying to say to you, ladies and gentlemen. I think I better stop here, maybe save a little for some other time. Until next time, I hope this serves some kind of purpose. I really want you to wake up because the Democrats and Donald Trump, all of what the best that they can give you will be the same old stuff right here. And that's not good enough. That's not good enough. And if you who say that this is good enough, then everybody who knows that this is not good enough are not bound by this stuff. They are free to speak up for God and try to wake you up down here. Thank you.